Hello students, today we are discussing under our chapter on differential and selective media, two differential media, the phenol red test and the starch hydrolysis test. Let's start with the phenol red test, which is also known as the Durham fermentation test. And this test is useful to tell us what types of sugars the bacteria are able to ferment. And different species of bacteria are able to ferment different types of sugars. Um, in this test that we are doing here, we are um, testing to see if the bacteria can ferment lactose. And so with the phenol red broth that is used for this test, lactose sugar would have been the sole sugar added to this broth so that we can be sure that if the um, lactose is eaten up by the bacteria and fermented, uh, and it produces acidic byproducts, that that would be the only sugar available for them to ferment. So how then do we inoculate this medium? The way that we're going to inoculate this medium is from a, a, a pure culture that was grown overnight in nutrient broth. And using your aseptic technique, as we discussed in the previous video, you want to get your loop and flame it in order to incinerate any microbes on your inoculation loop. And once you have resuspended this by again holding it between your thumb and forefinger and spinning the tube like this, you'll resuspend the pellet, and then you can transfer uh, one loopful of the bacteria from the overnight culture directly into this tube here. And so you would just go in with your loop, just go back and forth to release the bacteria, come out, flame your loop to kill and incinerate any bacteria remaining on your loop, and then what you would want to do is close the cap. So close the cap completely. So if this was your tube, you would close the cap completely. If it's a, if one of those that you can twist. Okay, and then go back a half turn. You want to leave it loose like this so that air can um, be exchanged between the inside and outside so that any bacteria that grow um, can respire. Okay. So you want to go ahead and incubate this overnight, and you want to put it in a test tube rack so that it stays upright. Okay? And when you label it, make sure you label the top here. Um, you can use a piece of tape, and if you do, make sure you dog ear the tape so it's easy to remove. And you want to put your name, the date, the type of medium, and the name of the bacterium um, that you are inoculating with. Don't ever label the cap, one, because it's very difficult to remove tape from caps, um, but also, because if the cap should get separated from the base, you will not know what's in that tube. Now, the next day when you return and compare the color of the uninoculated tube to the colors of the ones that you did inoculate, because one of the things you will have to assess here is the color. Now, if it turns yellow, that means that the bacteria ate the lactose, fermented it, produced acidic byproducts, and that will turn the phenol red indicator in this test a yellow color. So we would log A if it's yellow. Okay. If it turns pink, that means that instead of fermenting and eating the lactose, turning the phenol red yellow, uh, the bacteria went ahead and ate the peptides and the peptone that was added to this medium, producing ammonium byproducts, which are alkaline, and that would actually turn the phenol red a pinkish color. Okay, and so if that's the case, you put K. Now, why K? Um, because K for alkaline, see the K there? That's how I remember it. K for alkaline, A for acid, okay? Um, so the first thing is the color. And let's say we assess this and the color was uh, yellow. So I would write A for acid or acidic. The second thing you want to look at is this little tube in here. Now, this little tube here is called a Durham tube. And it's upside down inside of this bigger tube. And what it does is that it'll catch any gases that are made during the fermentation process. And it will actually fill with bubbles in there. And so the next day when you come back, you may see some bubbles in there. Okay. And that is the gas you're looking for. And so you must write plus gas or minus gas. So let's say we have an acidic... Um, yellow solution and there's lots of gas in there so we would write plus gas and that would be how you log your data 
And again, we're comparing the color and the presence or absence to gas to our negative control tube, our uninoculated tube, um, because we want to make sure that we have something to compare to. Now, something that would do this would be like, for example, E. coli is a strong fermenter and it does produce gas um, when um, it ferments the lactose. Okay, so this test is really useful for differentiating members of the Enterobacteriaceae um, uh, and other microbes as well. What I'd like to discuss is a starch hydrolysis test. And it uses a medium that contains uh, starch in it, which is a complex carbohydrate. And we're asking the question, will the bacteria be able to break down the starch and, um, uh, into simple sugars? And in order to do that, it must have the enzyme alpha amylase or 1,6-oligoglucosidase. So it must have those enzymes in order to break down the starch. And not all microbes have them, so it's a good way to differentiate between the bacteria. Now, both of these are differential tests. Neither of these are selective. Okay, so there are no selective agents in here. They're just differential. And so um, the plates that we like to use actually have a plastic partition already in the plate, and that divides the plate into three separate regions so that we can test three different bacteria at one time. So what you would want to do is go from your three separate cultures of overnight cultures, resuspend any pellet that may be at the bottom by vortexing the tube, okay, so that there's a uniform distribution in the tube. And using aseptic technique and working near your flame, flame the loop, cool it, go into the first one, and go ahead and transfer that. Now the pattern you want to do for this, if we're sure these are pure isolates, okay, pure cultures, which they should be, um, then you can just make a little circular pattern like this for each of these. So you're done with that one, you flame your loop, cool it, move on to the next one, make a little circular pattern, flame your loop, cool it, and then do the third one, make a circular pattern. Now you want to make sure that you label this plate on the base, as always, and what you're labeling is your name, the date, the name of the bacteria in each of the three parts of the plate, and if you wanted to do a plate that has uh, four parts, you could get one of those plates that doesn't have the divider, draw on the bottom with a Sharpie A cross to make four quadrants, and you could do it that way. Um, but we have these nifty plates that have the partitions in them, so we can just do three at a time, and it keeps them separated. Um, and so uh, once you've um, labeled the bottom and you've inoculated it, what you want to do is incubate it overnight at 37 degrees Celsius. And it may take a little longer than that if you have some slow growers, uh, maybe 48 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. But once you have good growth, um, you want to come back and you want to open the plate and add iodine. So you flood the surface with iodine and you'll have bacteria growing there. So flood the whole thing with iodine, wait two minutes, pour off the iodine in the appropriate waste container, and then you want to observe the plate. Now, any starch that was not degraded by the bacteria or eaten up by the bacteria will appear black, okay? Because iodine, when it reacts with starch, turns black. So anywhere on here that's black indicates that starch is present. Now, if you hold the plate up to the light, you'll see in some of these that there's a clearing around the actual colony, and that's indicating they're releasing exoenzymes, they're releasing the amylase uh, to break down the starch in those regions. And so let's say, for example, this one had a clearing around it, then we would know that this particular bacterium is amylase positive. And so that's how you would record your data. Now, this one does not have a clearing around it. Let's say that the starch is all the way around, there's no clearing. This one would be amylase negative. And so, again, that's how you would record the data for this particular test. Um, and you just add that to your growing table of data from the various microbes that you're testing with the differential and selective media. 
The next tests we are going to discuss are the um, blood auger tests, uh, the catalase tests, as well as the oxidase tests. So stay tuned for those.